try not to be before you long. So let me pray before. Um, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? I remember a time when church should be full. It's Good Friday. And Christians walking around like we got nothing to be happy about. But you understand that these verses that we that we quote would not be possible. That says his grace is sufficient. That he's an ever present help in the time of trouble. He's an alpha and omega. He's a rock of our salvation. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Look where we came. Look where we at. So let, let us, let us, let me pray. Father God, Lord, I come, Lord, that you would decrease me. That, Lord, that you would increase. Lord, speak to your people. Lord, this is good Friday, Lord God. Good news. Because, Lord, because of what you've done on the cross, that when we call on you for healing, we get it. When we seek you for our breakthrough, we get it. That, Lord God, if we don't have to go to what people don't want to talk about, the lake of fire, hell, and brimstone. Lord, we, go, we got a place to go to, and this is not over. Because your word declares, Lord, in my house, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that you had us in mind, that we shed your blood. And Lord, I ask right now that you would speak to your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them leave when they came in. Amen. Uh, Y'all turn to Matthew 27. Y'all have already heard it. And Matthew 27, I'll be reading from the 20 through the 25th verse. And I'll probably be moving along a few few times beyond this, but, um, and I'll read it. Let me know when y'all have it. We don't want to have nobody. We want, I want you to get this tonight. Matthew 27, verse 20. Y'all have it? And, and it? and it says, and I'll be reading from the New Language Translation, and it says, meanwhile, the lead increase, and the other leaders persuaded the crowds to ask Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. And so when the governor asked, which of these two do you want me to release to you? And the crowd shouted back their reply, Barabbas. But if I release Barabbas, Kyla asked him, what should I do with Jesus, who was called the Messiah? And they all shouted, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? Lord have mercy. But the crowd only roared the louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing, so he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this blood. This responsibility is yours. And they all yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death, we and our children. And I, and I want to speak to your spiritual conscience, if I will, tonight. And I, and I want y'all to be honest with yourselves, and only you can answer this. And I, and I want to ponder this question to your innermost spirit, has your public opinion changed you about Jesus? Has public opinion changed you about Jesus? Has society, has it made, has it impacted your, your feelings? Because what we see right now are these are the same people who are now saying crucify him. So tonight, I, because right now, Everybody is bringing their own kind of theory on what Jesus is called to look like in their life. And so I want to ask you also, is the Lord still the Lord and Savior in your life? Do you laugh when people make jokes about Jesus? Are you ashamed of your relationship with Jesus? Let me, let me clarify that. The only way you shout about Jesus is in here. Do you even try to defend or change people's views about Jesus? Has their public opinion 
of what people think about Jesus had it changed you? Because we can see right now, and in the context of these verses, these are the same people, and we're going to go to scripture, these are the same people five days ago. Y'all look at it, Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse 89. Y'all look at this thing. See, the world is saying that you can do what you want. And Jesus got to accept it. That there's more than one way to get to heaven. That we can serve God and still do our own thing. And, and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Are you listening to public opinion? Are you holding on to what you know about Jesus? Because the world is saying that I can do what I want. And he got to accept me in my sin. And so therefore we also got people who are trying to water down what the words say. And the most important thing is, have you allowed the public to compromise what God's words say? Lord have mercy. So in Matthew 21, I want y'all to see this. These are the same people who are saying crucify a week before. Y'all look at verse 8 and look at verse 9. I want y'all to see this. How did this happen? Look at, look at, look at verse 8. Most of the crowd spread their coats. Y'all see this, right? This is the week before. And they, and they spread the head of Jesus and others cut branches for the trees and spread them on the road. Y'all understand that verse 8, there was admiration and, 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 and admiration and adoration for Jesus. They were acknowledging who Jesus was. The crowd was in a in a in a in a in a knowledge bit of who Jesus was. And, and, and so they were they were they were in admiration. They were acknowledging who Jesus was. And then in verse 9, it said that he was in the center of their procession, and the crowds were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest. You understand in verse 9, there was a celebratory spirit of praise. If you look at it really closely, you're going to see what they, they're doing is what they call a Shabbat praise. They're giving Jesus the highest praise. They're celebrating him with public worship. They're giving unrestricted praise. They're giving praise for not only Jesus and also God, but yet we see the same people now are saying, crucify him. See how color the king would change? But I'm decla I declare tonight that we cannot allow people to change what we know about Jesus. He's my redeemer. Amen. And he's the same God yesterday. He's the same God today. He'll be the same God tomorrow. No matter what you think about him, he's my savior. He's my ever-present help in the time of trouble. He's my all and my all. And nobody can change how I feel, not even the public. You see how the public changed their feelings? See how people can change how you feel about Jesus? How many Christians right now are ashamed to tell people that they go to church on Sunday and that they are a Christian and that they're going to follow what God's word say? How many people are scared to say, for me in my house, I will serve the Lord? I ain't worried about you laughing at me. Laugh all you want. I know who my redeem is. I don't serve a dead God. I serve a living God. And he looks beyond my faults and he sees my need. When I call on him, he'll answer. So no matter what you think about him, I know who he is. And you can't change me. You know what, you know what the song they say back in the 80s? You don't know what I need and you can't change that. No matter what you say about Jesus, it's not going to change how I feel. How many of us are letting what the public say, what society say about Jesus, change how we feel? This, this crowd. This crowd of people who are shouting Hosanna, who are acknowledging 
not only who Jesus was, but also who God was. Now their feelings are changed a week later. And I, and I want y'all to, to look at this thing, that this is the same Jesus now that they want to crucify. And I want you to understand that they have every reason to not go in the crowd. Y'all look at Matthew 14. Go ahead, Mercy. Look at Matthew 14. We're going we gonna to get into it a little bit. And Matthew 14 and verse 14. Let me see how, how, how crowds follow like the wind. People change like the wind. And Matthew 14, verses 14. I'll wait for y'all. Here's the same Jesus. And Matthew 14, 14, y'all got it? It say a vast what? Crowd. Y'all see it again? You're going to see this same crowd a few times. It said a vast crowd was there as she stuck her. They're waiting on Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He healed. He had what? Compassion on them. And he healed what? Their sick. Y'all see that? And, and in Matthew 19, 19 verse, through the 21st verse, not only Jesus heals, Jesus after healing, Jesus said, Lord, they're hungry. So I got to feed them. This is the same Jesus that fed them good food. Now, I'm a Baptist. It had to be good fish going on there. So Jesus feeds them. Y'all look at this thing. Then, then in 19, Jesus said he told the people to sit down on the grass, and he what, took what? Five loaves and two fish looked up toward heaven, asked God's blessing on the food. Breaking the loaves in the pieces, he gave some of the bread and fish to eat the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate as what? As much as they what wanted. And they picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. And about 5,000, y'all get this thing, about 5,000 men had eaten from those five loaves in addition to what? The women and the children. I mean, it was more than that. So this is the same Jesus who heals them, who feeds them, who takes care of their needs, had compassion on them. And I'm telling you tonight that we cannot allow public opinion to change how you feel about Jesus. He's still good. He's still worthy of praise. And if they don't want him, you still should want him. And if the world rejects him, you should still want him. You know he's a healer, so you forget about what people say. He's still your God. He's still your Jesus. You cannot let public opinion, let society make you change how you feel about Jesus. Because I got news for you. If you're ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you. This is, this is, this is the same Jesus. Same Jesus. How they allow the public of Kenya and allow what people thought about him to change how they felt. And Matthew 34, y'all see it? Matthew actually, same, same chapter, in 34 and 36. Now, in the New King James Version, it's going to say something a little different. This is the most powerful thing when I was looking at it. Jesus in Matthew 14, 34 and 36, he allows them to touch him. This is the same Jesus. We have, a, we have, we have a, 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 a Savior that lets us accessible to him. Jesus had every reason from man's standards. When sick people come around us, we don't want to be bothered. You understand in Matthew 14, 34, look what it says. Many touched him. And they were made not just well, but they were made what? Also whole. And when they had crossed over to the, they came to the land of uh, Genesis, verse 34, 36 says, and they begged him that they might 
only touched the hem of his garment. And look what happened. And as many as touched it were made what? Perfectly well. Isn't that something? Did the same Jesus who allowed them to come close to his proximity to allow him to, like, them to have total access to touch him. And now there's the same Jesus you want nothing to do with. The same Jesus. Can you imagine how it must have felt to touch Jesus? We talking about, we talking about the Son of God who allows you to touch him. And not just touch him, get results. And so I'm saying tonight that we cannot allow what the culture says about Jesus. Call the Jesus we know that we pray to him, we get results. He's a long time God. So the same Jesus grants them access by bringing wellness and wholeness, by allowing them to touch him and get their healing. Matthew 19, verses 2. All these scenarios that we can see that Jesus is healing them, and yet they want nothing to do with him. And Matthew 19, verse is 2. And a great multitude what, followed him, and he did what? And he healed them. Once again, the crowds are following Jesus. And Jesus is allowing them to come near him. And he's also healing the crowds. And yet, they don't want nothing to do with him. And in and, and Matthew 21, verse 14, again, another example. Another example again. Y'all have it? In Matthew 21, verse 14, then who came to him? Then the blind and the what? Lame came to him and what? In the temple. So in other words, they had to go to no crease. Jesus allowed them to come straight to him, just as they was, and he what? Healed them. And yet they still allowing what people say to change how they feel about somebody that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt healed them, who restored them, who looked beyond their faults and seen their very needs. And yet, they're saying in Matthew 27, 20, this is the same crowd that was swayed and derailed by the truth. Isn't it funny how we can let people change what we think? About Jesus? See, on Good Friday, we should be in a celebration mood to thank God for what God has done for us. And we should not be ashamed of who he is. And if you don't want to serve him, I can't change that. But for me, I know who he is. He's the same God that saved me. He's the same God that answers my prayer. He's the same God that keeps me on day to day. And what you think about him, don't say how I feel about him. We should never allow what society say about Jesus. Y'all see it, y'all see it right now. People have no, no shame these days. They'll tell you they're weaken Jesus to something that's more of a joke. And they take fun and they take pride now in making fun of Jesus. And we Christians just sit there and take it. We should be like David. David got indignant. We start talking about his God. But we start saying, well, it ain't got nothing to do with me. That's their opinion. You, don't you want to change your opinion about your wife? Don't you want to change your opinion about people? Somebody say something about my wife is not true. I'm going to say something. Why? Because I cannot let you leave thinking the wrong thing about her. Why do we let the same thing happen to Jesus? We know that people are saying things that's not true. We know that the, what the Bible says about his word. We know what God's word says, and yet we just go with the flow. We sit around the office. We let people make fun. 
We don't, we don't try to straighten out the lies or the falsehood about Jesus. And we know the truth. Here, they knew the truth. They experienced the truth. And yet, they got persuaded to be manipulated by somebody else. The crowd was swayed. And they allowed somebody's opinion to derail the truth. The truth is that Jesus fed them. The truth is that he healed the blind. The truth is that he healed people everywhere he went. He had some casting on. How you let somebody now tell you something different? And I want y'all to see this thing. And I want you to get the danger in knowing who you follow. See, I'm going to say this. You can't even watch everybody on TV. In. I'm sorry. You got to go get your word. You can't follow everything you hear. You got to follow what God's word says, but you also got to be listening, have some discernment, because everything you hear on TBN is not the truth. Lord have mercy. I ain't trying to start nothing. I'm just telling the truth. Everything that you hear on some of these stations are not true. Everything that come out from Kessler's mouth are not true. And we allow them people to take us in places we should never be going. You know, Lord have mercy. I thought it was getting bad when Mian did it. I was on YouTube, and the lady said that she's running a church. And the thing is now that she got to sleep with all the men. And just when you think it get worse. And she's saying that her job is to sleep with everybody because it brings them closer to the Lord. Lord have mercy. It's going to bring us closer to something else when we leave that alone. But what I'm just saying is that you got to be careful by knowing what God's word says. And not allowing people to take you away from what God's word says. If you know who God is, you should care what people think. I'm not going to let go until he blesses me. And if I'm going through something, experience has taught me that God is faithful. And I cannot do it my way. My way is the reason why I got myself 99% of my problems. But when I trust him, with all my heart, and lean not to my own understanding. The Bible says what? He will what? Direct my paths. So, and Matthew, and, and this particular thing, I want y'all to see this thing. How powerful persuasion could be. And if you want these people that's easily persuaded, you better get your word. And you better pray for God to lead you. Actually, the Bible tells them that every man examine themselves. This is a test tonight. Or, or the only person that answer that is you. How do you feel people talk about Jesus? Has it made you question your, your beliefs? Has it made you give up? And I want y'all to see Matthew 27, verse 20. How a few people change the crowd. Y'all got it? Matthew 27, verse 20. I want y'all to see this. I want, you to, I want you to see the power of influence. That's why you can't be around everybody. See, this is a prime example. Lord have mercy. This is a prime example that you can't keep and be with everybody. The company you keep matters. Actually, the Bible says bad company, what? Corrupts. A little yeast runs on what? Whole batch. You got to be careful about who you hang around. Y'all, what, what, y'all get it? Let me say. But the who? The chief priests and the elders, what? What they did? Persuaded. Persuaded. Keyword. Persuaded who? The multitudes. That they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. How, how that works? Thank God. Thank God that healed them. Now you reduce Jesus that he's no more better than a criminal. See how, see how we do? That's why we got to watch who we hang around. That's why we have to be careful about the company we keep. That's why you have to be careful about the circles you're in. Because guess what? If I hang around dirt and people call them people dirt, what do they think about me? 
So we see that a, 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 a what? A small group. Now, the Bible does not give an indication of how many of the chief priests it was. But we say multitudes of the crowd, that means they were what? Outnumbered. Isn't it funny how the people who are not the majority is dictate where Christianity go in this country? Isn't that funny? And it's right now? And Christians right now silent. Like we ain't got no power. And we're letting, we're letting everybody else come out while we're what? In default mode. And we're not even saying anything. And so in essence what we're doing is we're letting the we're letting public opinion drown us out. But Deacon Neal, that's not true. Yeah, it is. We're going to lose. Yeah, it is. We're going to lose. Everybody coming out. Chris is silent. We, we act like we ain't got no power. And sometimes we won't even say nothing. We, we even in this place now, you know, ain't got no, it ain't got, listen, if it's Gina's business, it's your business. Why we, why we got, have got to this place where he said it ain't got nothing to do with me? Ain't you God's child? If they're speaking about your Jesus, ain't that your business? I can't let you leave and say something about Jesus without me saying something. Because I'm offended. You're talking about my God. And my God deserves better respect than that. So I'm not going to allow you to reduce him to he's just something that a throwaway. Or that he's only God. Or you only believe that he's only in the business of making you feel good all over. That is not who God is. And you must let people know that if you are not saved, you're going to hell. Why are we letting people go to hell? Because we don't want to say nothing. So this, this small group of people change public opinion. Are you going to do that? Are you going to take a commitment from now on to go out here and start opening up your mouth and letting people know who God is? Take away the lies. Take away the, the misconceptions. It is not just past the job to let people know. The Bible says that we must go out and baptize all men in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The church has made this a one-man show. They only want to look to the pastors that they're supposed to be the only one that's promoting the gospel. No, that's you. That's you. That's you. That's me. And so, this small group of people allowed them to change about Jesus. Somebody that showed compassion. Somebody that showed love. Somebody that healed. Somebody that restored them and delivered them. And the crowd allowed public opinion to change, and they essentially denied Jesus. We do that every time we close our mouths when we know what the truth is. When we allow public opinion to silence us from speaking the truth. Can you imagine how that must feel when somebody chews somebody lesser than you? That's what they did. They choose a, a criminal over Jesus. Public of Kenyon. And I want to ponder this question. I'm about done. I want to answer this question to you. Has Jesus changed your public opinion? Or has public opinion changed you? Has Jesus changed your public opinion or has public opinion changed you? Only you can answer that question. As we celebrate Easter, we take a, a renewedness of being publicly visible. There are people who are going to hell and the church right now has, like they, like they just don't care. And it's in our demeanor, it's in our actions, it's every time that we, we won't confront the truth, it's every time we have an opportunity to tell people the good news, 
Every time we allow people to see something they know that is not conducive to the word of God and we allow it, what you're doing is you're letting public opinion override the word. But the devil is a liar. I'm going to open my mouth and tell about the goodness of God. And if the only time that you can tell about the goodness of God is only in here, the public opinion already got you. Lord have mercy. So in Matthew 10, verses 33, now I want us to understand uh, the significance of our silence. Understanding how God feels when we allow color of Kenyan to silence us. Matthew 10, verse 33. Lord have mercy. This is a this is a message that should have been preached on Sunday morning. Lord have mercy. Matthew 10, verse 33. You understand what happens when you allow people to silence you? You know what you are doing? You actually showing you're ashamed of God. Look, 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 look what it says. But what? Whoever what? Denies me. And that's what and that's what he was doing. They just said Hosanna. And now they're saying, crucify. Isn't that what they were doing? And they started denying Jesus, denying everything about him, the miracles, the feeding, the compassion, the deliverance. How you go for acknowledging Jesus, that's in the name of the Lord, giving a Shabbat praise, to now letting somebody say, Crucify that very thing you gave praise to. That reminds me of that verse said, out of the same mouth that gives God praise, curse. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But look, look what it's saying to say. But whoever what? I, I want y'all to understand tonight. Don't let the public silence you. But whoever what? The nice little poor men will, what will happen? Well, well, I will also deny what? Before my father, that is what? In heaven. Don't allow what society say about God to change who you are, to change your feelings, to change your worship, to change your relationship. If you know who God is, hold on to it. I ain't got to argue with you. I ain't got to get in no, no theological argument with you. Because I know who my God is. I know who my Redeemer is. I know who watch over me when I go to sleep at night. I know who looks beyond my fears and calms all my doubts. And if you don't want him, and if you don't like him, and if you don't want to serve him, that's you. But you can't change how I feel. Public of kingdom don't move me going another. Because what I found out about men, men will lie, and they, they will change like the days of the week. They, they one way, one minute, and one way up the next minute. We can see right here how men can change from the very thing that they knew was the truth and follow a lie. And John 14, 15. Do you love him? John 14, 15. What did it say? If you love me, if, if, how many people say that? If. See, what I see in these verses, the people who said they love Jesus was not true. Because when you love Jesus, you don't change. You hold on to him. Nothing changes you. You hold on to his unchanging hand. And if nobody else wants him, you still want him anyhow. If nobody else will serve him, you serve him anyhow. 
if everybody else rejects him, you don't reject him, you hold on to him. And if you're the only one in, that's in church that want to open your mouth, you do it. Because this is personal. And I'm saying tonight that we must get to a place where we be personal about our relationship with God. Don't allow what society say, because society can't save you. Jesus can. Society can't heal you, but Jesus can. Society can't fix your marriage, but Jesus can. Society can't fix the church, but Jesus can. Jesus is our all and our all. Hold on to who he is and let the world be who they is. Because the world going to be the world. And the church got to be the church. Don't allow people. Don't allow kings to change your love. Change your relationship. Change your worship. And keep you being obedient to God. Or make you reject Jesus. I love Jesus. I love him because he loved me first. That's enough. And I cannot do without him. I need him to survive. I cannot put no trust in man. I cannot put no trust in government. I can't put no trust in nobody else. But I can put my trust in Jesus. And he will never let me fall. That's what the words say. Y'all know Psalm 91. Won't let my foot snatch against the rock. Y'all know that. So may this Easter let us walk out with a newness to try to change the people who are out here in this world. Don't allow the world to change you. You change the world. That's what the church will be doing. The church is called to change the world. Isn't it funny that we think in that everything is called to feel from the government? Y'all listen, Lord have mercy. This is not a political statement. Doesn't matter who you is, what side of the thing you own. If you believe that they're gonna work everything out, you follow the wrong person. Because they're conducive to following who's gonna follow them. I follow. Who God say who's in charge. What it say in Isaiah? The government shall rest on who shoulders? The Christian peace. Mighty God. That's who. Who got the world in their hands. My help comes from what? The Lord. My deliverance comes from the Lord. I can't trust what the world say. Therefore, I can't worry about it. Even the Bible tells us this peace that I have. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Let us change the opinion. Let us change the lives. Let us be careful and an opportunity to change the misconceptions of how Jesus is viewed or misconstrued. The world said that Jesus it's nothing. That's a lie. That's a lie. He's the Savior. He's the one that shed his blood. Right now, there'll be no remission of sin without, without, right now, we, without be, without any trace of forgiveness. But because what Jesus did, we should be opening our mouths and telling people about the goodness of God. May this Easter, may the rest of this year, let us be billboards. Let us be advertisements of who God is. The Bible said that we are ambassadors of Christ. Let us go out and represent Jesus the way he's supposed to be represented. And not as the world sees him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. we have a selection